Hello, and welcome to Think Python, Chapter 1, Part 2. If you are just starting Chapter 1, you can use this link, thinkpython.com nb. If you click on that, it'll bring you to this page where you can click here to run Chapter 1 on Colab. But since we already started this notebook in Part 1, I'm going to go to the notebook that I've already created and pick up from where we left off. When you do this, if you come back to a notebook that hasn't run for a little while, you want to make sure that all of the cells in the top part of the notebook get executed before you continue from where you left off. So I'm going to go here to the Runtime menu and select Run Before, which will run all of the cells prior to the cell that I'm currently in. So I'm going to select this cell here, go to the Runtime menu, and hit Run Before. And that'll take just a couple of seconds to run, and now we can pick up from where we left off. So last time we talked about integers and floating point values, and this time we're going to talk about strings, which represent a sequence of letters that are strung together like beads on a necklace. So to write a string, we can put a sequence of letters inside straight quotation marks. So for example, we'll start with hello, and if we evaluate this expression by hitting shift and enter, it gives us the string that we just typed. It is also legal to write a string using double quotation marks. So either one, whichever one you prefer, and we get the string world. One reason that you're allowed to use both single and double quotation marks is if you have a string like it's a uh, small and you put it inside of single quotes, you have a problem because the apostrophe character is the same as the single quotes that we're using at the beginning and the end of a string. So if there's an apostrophe in a string, you'll probably want to use double quotes for that string. It is also legal, in addition to the letters in a string, you can have punctuation, like a comma, or a space, or digits, and all of the other characters that you can type can be a character in a string. Some, but not all, of the arithmetic operators work with strings. So, for example, if we want to join a bunch of strings into a single string, that operation is called concatenation, and we can do that by typing a string, and then an operator like plus, and another string, and then possibly another plus and another string. The result when we evaluate this expression is to concatenate all of those strings together into a single string. The other operator that works with strings is multiplication. So if we have the string spam and we multiply it by four, it repeats that string four times and concatenates it together. I'm going to put in a comma and a space so that when it gets concatenated, it spells spam, 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 spam. Other operators don't work with strings. So for example, if you try to divide a string by four, you'll get an error message that says that that is an unsupported operand type for division. And what that means is that the division operator doesn't work with these kinds of things, these types, strings and integers. Colab provides a feature here called explain error. So anytime you see an error message that you don't understand, you can press that and the uh, Gemini tool will pop up over here and give you an explanation. In this case, it says, it seems like you're trying to divide a string by an integer. However, this operation is not supported in Python. You can only divide numbers. So that's a pretty good explanation. I'm going to close that for now and move on. Python does provide a function that's called len, len, that will tell you the length of a string. So, for example, the string that we were just working with, spam, contains four characters. And notice that it's telling you about the characters that are in the string, and it does not include the quotes. Again, the two options when you create a string, you can either use straight quotes or double quotes. You can't use backticks. Those look like quotation marks, and that might be an open quotation mark in some 
word processors, but in Python, that's not a legal character. The backtick can't appear anywhere in a Python program, and it'll give you a syntax error. The other thing that you might encounter are smart quotes, also known as curly quotes, and those are not legal for a Python string either. So that's enough about strings for now. We'll come back to them later. The next topic is values and types. And we've seen a number of values at this point, and we've seen that there are different kinds of values. So 2, for example, is an integer, 42.0 is a floating point number, and hello is a string, a string of characters in quotation marks. A kind of value is called a type, and every value has a type. So if you have a value or an expression, and you're not sure what type it is, you can use the function that's called type, and you can put any expression in parentheses. So if we ask for the type of 2, it confirms that that is an int. So the name of that type is int. And if we ask for the type of a number like 42.0, it'll tell us that that is a float. So the type of a floating point number is float. And if we ask for the type of a string like spam, it tells us that that is an str. The name of that type is str for string. These types, int, float, and string, can be used as functions. So for example, if we call the function int and we give it a value that is a floating point number, it will create a new integer. And it always rounds down. When you create an integer, it'll take a floating point number. Even 42.9, which is very close to 43, gets rounded down to 42. We can use the float function, and if we give it an integer, for example, like 126, it will convert that to a floating point number that represents 126. Now, here's one of the things that can be confusing. If you have a string that contains digits, it looks like a number, but it's actually a string. So if we ask for the type, of the string 126, it confirms that that is in fact a string. And if you try to use it as if it's a number, like 126 divided by 3, we've already seen that that's not a legal operation. Strings can't be divided by numbers. However, if you have a string that contains digits, you can convert it to an integer using the int function again. So 126 as a string can be converted to an integer, 126. And if you have a string that contains digits and a decimal point, like 12.6, you can use the float function to convert that to a floating point number. If you write a large integer, you might be tempted to put commas between the digits. So for example, this is how you might write 1 million in a text document. And that is actually a legal Python expression, but it doesn't do what you might expect. Python interprets that as a sequence of integers, 1, 0, 0, that are separated by commas. And we'll see more examples of that kind of sequence later on. If you want to write a million, three, one, two, three, you can write it like that, but you'll notice it's not easy to see how many zeros there are or to recognize that as one million. So it's legal to put underscore characters into a large number where we might have put commas in a text document. And Python recognizes that as one million. So that's the end of part two. The next thing we'll do in this chapter is work on the exercises.